grapes, melons, oranges, and coconut shells. Oh yeah, walnuts, peanuts, pineapple smells. Grapes, melons, oranges, and coconut shells. Oh yeah, walnuts, peanuts, pineapple smells. Grapes, melons, oranges, and coconut shells. here for a new stream we're gonna start recording here soon this is my good friend josh i'm gonna record as much as we can uh maybe i should do the introduction and like clip it in afterwards now i'm gonna do it all in one yeah so we don't have to like go back and Get forth it done, man. uh but let's uh i'm gonna start recording here honestly we're just having a conversation this is straight up a new segment of the podcast which is supposed to be a secret hence why i was thinking about even going live but we said fuck it and like we're just here right now yeah, man. um we're calling it i'm calling it mixing it up with daddy d i'm talking to other people producers in the industry but it'll be more scalable we'll talk about music but that's not like the point we're just here to have fun and fuck around find out you know so uh let's uh what are we gonna record. find out good question that is a great question <laughs> Um, you didn't tell me we were going to find out anything today. I yeah, I also to... didn't know we were going to find out anything. Yeah. It's, I feel like uh, I actually want to do the intro afterwards. Okay. And then I'll clip it to the front because I want to do the thing where all the other podcasts do, which is like they, they start midway into an, an engaging conversation. I like that. Yeah, yeah. But then, like, they do the intro later, so we'll do that later. That's good. That's good. Yeah, you should. You, we should I'll do that because when, when we talk about some interesting stuff, that goes at the beginning. Oops. Interesting stuff goes at the beginning. Yeah. You got that hook, right? I got that hook. Yeah. Josh, uh, what have you been up enough. to recently? Man, I just finished The Last of Us, watching The Last of Us. Yeah? And On TV, the TV show. Crying. The show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, is that sad? It's really sad, man. Yeah, I don't think yeah. I've ever played the game. It'll move you. Yeah, it, the game will move you, but the the show is great too. It, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the best, if not the best, video game adaptation I've ever seen. For sure. Really? It it's really interesting because I feel job. like one of the reasons why I love video games is it's like interacting storytelling. So it's like you watch movies for the story, but it's like video games is like double engaging. Like remember when you first time you played Halo or Halo Two like campaign the first time? Yeah. It was like holy shit, this is a movie. Yes. But you can actually play. It For was... me, that was The Last of Us. Exactly. Like I yeah. played, I played that game maybe three, four times. Maybe at this point, I'm like in the middle of another replay at this moment. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. And they have part two because of the is, movie or the show. Don't speak of, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've always, I've always thought that that was like super interesting, like video games, and that's why I've always liked PlayStation. Yeah. Because they tend Same. to have titles where it's like stories, you know. Story mode, man. Yeah. Yeah, you, you have you you have a, a game that's actually fun to play on multiple levels and you can just do it when you're by yourself. You know, yeah. you don't have to wait for your friends to be ready. You know, you can just go. Um, oh, for sure. That's always been I, I've always been a fan of the of the solo adventure. Do you remember the first time you ever played video games? Yeah. How old yeah. are you about? Wait, how old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, I'm thirty three. Okay. So first video game that I ever played was blue version Pokemon. Oh, for real? Yeah, for real. Blue. Blue was okay. the first one that so I that's got. My still mom bought Game Boy me. Color? Nope. Game Boy Pocket. 
Game Boy Pocket. I had a Game Boy Pocket, so the second version of the Game Boy, basically. I didn't have an, I didn't have an OG, but I had the Pocket. I had the see-through one where you could see all the little uh -huh. tech inside, oh, cool. which is cool. Uh, but yeah, blue version, man. Got all 151 Pokemon, the original ones. You were obsessed with it. I was obsessed, man. Wow. That was my first addiction, I guess you can say. Like, that was as a child. Really? <laughs> I have other addictions now, but, you know. I think the only Pokemon game I've ever played is Ruby on the Advance. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember having the OG I one, too. Had Ruby. Yeah, the yeah. story with the OG one is that, like, my, my sister, my I'm the oldest, and when number two was born, my sister was born mm -hmm. in Okinawa, Japan. Uh -huh. My grandpa just, like, loved the shit out of her. Oh, and so, my like, gosh. my mom got mad at him for spending all of his t my grandpa's time with, with my sister. <laughs> with the favorite, yeah. And so he's like... He's like, you gotta spend more time with your old, with my oldest son. And what he does is he takes me to the game store, buys me an OG Game Boy, and then continues to take my sister out. <laughs> That's all we wanted, though, to yeah, be honest. Yeah, like, we didn't feel bad at all. Like, <laughs> yes, chill. let us play games all day. Like, I wish my parents let me, because we would have fought a lot less. <laughs> I was chill, dog. I remember, yeah, yeah. I remember playing Tetris. Never, yeah, never like the OG that. Tetris. No, I was really good at it. I remember being like 14, 15, 16. I found like an old Tetris, mm -hmm. like on old Game Boy, and like I beat it. Wow, How there's like because there's like a mode where Tetris. you have like levels and it like levels up. Mm -hmm. And I started at the highest level and I beat the entire thing. There's, maxed it out. there's like a special song, and the rocket, the Russian rocket goes up and like explodes with fireworks or so whatever. So, is it a Cold War game because it has the Russian rocket? I have or no idea. Did you just like nuke the entire world? I have you no win, idea. You win the game. <laughs> I just remember like wondering the same thing. Like I didn't know people could beat this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems unbeatable to me. Yeah, like, I, I beat it once. My mind doesn't work that way. I, I would say my dad is someone that's really good at Tetris, uh, just because of the way he packs the car for all of our family vacations. Ah. You know, he's just one of those like, dude, that game. This yeah, shape is perfect for this corner of the vehicle. You know, it's like, okay, you you could sit there if you you know go like this. <laughs> Tetris you know, is a fine. life skill, not not a game, dude. <laughs> it really is, man. Tetris can you know help you. Tetris, Tetris, you know. I remember, I remember the first time I moved to Cal. I think it was, was it to California? No, I think it was to Utah. The first time I moved to Utah, we like packed up my minivan that I still have out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we packed it in so well. My 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 dad and my wife were like, "No way, that you're gonna do this." <laughs> and I packed it up so well that we actually fit everything without a U-Haul, like yep, a trailer. That's my dad. Yeah, yeah. And then. First off, that was like the first time I think like I really impressed my wife, my brand new wife, you know. Well, that's a good thing. You and then also we broke wife. the shocks, like the shocks, the the, the, <laughs> the car, no the, the, the the spring tension has just never been the same since. <laughs> They're not shocking anything Dude, anymore. Dude, it's like a permanent low rider <laughs> at this point. People pay to have that done. You I just, know. You just had to load the car up real heavy. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you save money. <laughs> People pay I just had to, to do be really did. poor to <laughs> yes. not afford a trailer, exactly. a rental trailer. Exactly. It's all it took. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, dude. You were ahead of the curve, man, with those lowered uh, minivans. That's right. Uh, that's that right. trend, you know, you were ahead of it. Dude, we went to uh, we went to some sort of like kids museum in Glendale or Pasadena mm -hmm. the other day, and like right outside in the parking lot because it was right outside the Rolls Bowl. Mm -hmm. And uh, dude, they had like a like a whole lowrider get together, really show off thing, car show. Dude, it was Everything dope. Was just, mm. Actually, this is a great story because this is literally like a week or two ago, and one of the cars, they were first off, they were beautiful, gorgeous, like antique with like hand painted. What do you call it? Like the stripes, the pinstripes, pinstripes and, yeah, like, yeah. and like art Crazy on the detail, hood. Yeah. And one of the cars, I remember this, dude. One of the cars had naked ladies painted on the front and my four-year-old son saw it and he's like daddy that's my favorite daddy that's my favorite and like we was like i'm trying to avoid it like oh not yet dude you're still four you're still four too so your young. son came out as straight at four years old dude i i don't <laughs> Maybe. And I remember, like, we're, like, trying to go home, and he's, like, in the car. He's like, Daddy, I want to see that black car. The black car. You know? And I'm like, why do you like it? He's like, I just, it's for me. He said, out like, he's, this guy can barely talk. And he's like, Daddy, it's for me. It's my car. I want to see it. Oh my I'm Lord. like, why do you want to see it? Do you like boobs? Like, I said, do you like, and I said that in Japanese, do you like oppai? Like, some yeah, boobs? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, oppai. Uh -huh. He's, like, embarrassed about it. Like, then the same shame kind of shit set in. He's like, I don't know. I, it's just for me. Like, <laughs> that's dead. crazy. At four, like, it's all those emotions. Yeah, and I had to explain to my wife, like, this is something now you can see firsthand as a woman, 
you don't realize the sex drive of men. Like, he doesn't even know what that is, nor no. has he gone through hormone, mm -hmm. and he's just like, boobs! Already the, brain, <laughs> already the brain is like, I recognize this from something. And it's funny, because I'm like, dude, we could, I literally said, dude, we could look at mom's boobs when we get home. I mean, because they're like, they're not like, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> but he's like, no, not the same. <laughs> so like, there's something that triggered it. I'm like, like, that's a good lesson. It's never the same as the artwork. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, I mean, I mean, how young. would you handle that? That was like the first time I had to think about. This is a parenting moment, yeah. and I had to stop before I like talk to him. Yeah, and I'm like. How do I want to deal with this? Because he's going. This is one of those moments he's going to remember for the rest of his life. Because we both have have had those moments. Yeah, but do you remember moments from when you were four? Oh, bro, I remember having a wet dream before I knew what sex was. Wow. I, I remember my first. Sex I remember really that. I remember I looking yeah. up skirts at churches, mm -hmm. like when I was his age. Wow. At church when I was his yeah, age. I don't have memories from that early. Um, that's so interesting. Dude, I've always had like I'm a really high voice, and I've always been like really feminine. Yeah. And like really creative and chaotic like classic feminine energies okay but i've it. never been like i've never wavered on my sexuality because of like people thought i was like people thought i was flamboyant metro, and gay metro, or yeah. metro or whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ever metro since blooming. i was in high school like i pink i was like <laughs> i was like peacocking since high school just like wearing pink backpacks pink vans yeah. like people thought like you know like well whatever uh but like for me it's just like i just never this never crossed my mind because of things like that. Like four years old, looking up skirts, yeah. dropping coins on purpose, thinking that I was clever. Oh, five, that's man. a five-year-old. That is very that's clever. That's why you learned that a year yeah, later. Yeah, okay. dude. Okay. Um, yeah, no, man. Which is so interesting. Like, I had to teach him. I'm like, how, how would you deal with that? Like, if that was your kid. If I, Yeah, I was thinking as you were speaking, I would say I'd probably react to it in in a more casual way. I wouldn't even yeah. take it serious, you know? Oh, you that's kinda, a good idea. You kind of just... You're kind of like, oh yeah, those are fun, and then you just leave it at that. Boobs. You know? Yeah. Ah, uh, I know? See, I should, maybe that was the. And, and you don't highlight it. It's almost like you. It's almost like an unaccented syllable in English. You know, you just you're you're not you're not making. That's a, point a good about idea. It, but it's like. I didn't do that. Pull back. I yeah. did not do that. And now, then, retrospect, that may I'm not have been saying you should have done that. I'm saying that's what I would have done. So what just, I did, what I did was, was I don't take think, a deep breath. I don't think what you did was wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I did was, I didn't realize that was an option. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> exactly. Because exactly. I'm like, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> we're here. We're Let's taking go. this path, dude. <laughs> we're on the bus. <laughs> so I'm here. I am four year old kid in the car, and I I strap him into his car seat. So he's like crying because he doesn't get to see the boobies, dude. <laughs> And, uh, and I'm like, dude, and I like take a deep breath. I think about how I'm going to say, and what I say is, I th I, if I remember correctly, what I said is like, that's awesome. Boobs are awesome. But like one at a time, dog. Or like, it was like, not all the time. Yeah. Like not all the time. Yeah. They're awesome. It's in awesome. Situations. But it's like, okay. see, like, see how you already can't control yourself. It only gets worse. You're only four, dude. Yeah. Your balls yeah, yeah, yeah. are have are still up there. They yeah, haven't yeah, dropped. They have not descended to earth. Imagine what's gonna happen yeah. when you. <laughs> anyway, I I don't remember exactly what I said, but I feel like I dealt with it well. No, I'm sure you did, man. You're Daddy D. After I'm all, I'm Daddy D. <laughs> Daddy D. Daddy D. Dude, Let's the go. amount of it's all bravado, confidence. That's I, amazing, though, man. I, I I don't know. I I would have loved. Wouldn't you have loved to see like third person, like what you were like at that age? You know, oh, that would be yes fun. and no. Yeah, I'd love to see videos. I I have some home videos because my parents bought the big camcorder that you had to put on your shoulder. You know, when I was a kid, and and they and they do have some of my funny movies, but just I wanted one following me all the time. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, to just see what I was doing. I wonder. I, no I would have. I loved. I was talking about this with my therapist literally today. Yeah, like I love being a kid, and I was. Wild! Yeah. I was crazy. Yeah. I made your ADHD boy look like he was taking pills. Oh, I would have definitely like been medicated. Adderall. Like as well. I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I wasn't medicated. My I dad wasn't. didn't believe that. I know. I said I would have been. My parents didn't either. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Don't medicate my child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's a whole other story. But this is a uh, this is real, and I remember. I really enjoyed being a kid, but if I was my own parent, I would. Guy is crazy, and it's tough. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I think I would have. But I'm also a better dad than my dad was or my parents were. So it's like, at least I think I am. Maybe that's, oh man, that's that's scary thought. Who would think <laughs> that they're a worse dad than their parents? Yeah, yeah, you for know? Real. That's not a natural thought. So I feel like we all 
automatically will think we're better. Hold on, nah, nah. I think some people, nah, nah. We're not gonna get into it. Nah, that's but, too um, dark. This is a little let's, dark. This is a little let's dark. Keep it light. But uh, no, for real though. I just remember like that's a real moment, and I told my wife like my son's never gonna forget that. Like that moment, he's not gonna forget. Like I don't know. You don't remember having any moments like that? No, not not that. You early were you were age. actually like in control since you were a kid. I didn't know about sex until. Well, I mean, I didn't. I was four or five. Yeah, I didn't even know about. I just really like butt. Yeah, I didn't even know about boobs or butts until almost middle school, man. I mean, I didn't know what it was. Honestly. It just made me feel. I didn't even think inside. about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like. It. I remember looking up skirts or like cuddling with the with girls in, yeah. in kindergarten. In kindergarten preschool, when we had like nap time, I would like cuddle with them. Okay. I would go into their nap mat and go under their covers with her and like cuddle with them. Like I got in trouble all the time. And feel things that you didn't understand. Well, not not like not like. I didn't. There wasn't any sort of like negative creepy. No, no, no not negative. Not negative. It was just, just like, like I really oh, like girls. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And totally I remember like, yeah, I remember just not like not knowing what any of it was, and it was just natural. And all the parents thought I was a pervert. <laughs> oh my god! And I grew up to be <laughs> one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're like they were wrong then, but they predicted <laughs> what would happen later on. No, nah, but uh. <laughs> Yeah, you don't remember this stuff. I no, feel like man. I was just out of control. I feel like I had my mind wiped at like 12. Do you remember <laughs> like ever like, have you seen these memes where like these like kids, they're like adults, but they're like skits or like, they're like me in preschool and all of a sudden like a flashbang goes off and they're all of a sudden like aware and like, where am I? What am I doing? And they're able to have free thought. Have you seen those memes? No, I haven't. Do you, do you remember when you like, feel like you started taking control of your awareness when you like became aware for the first time in your life and you kind of came off autopilot was there a moment like that for you there have been a few moments i mean anytime you make a, a really big decision like for example quiznos at 16 and a recruiter came in and i just decided right then i'm going to join the marine corps so like a hold on like did you that. join the marine corps yeah yeah, yeah i was in the Marines. oh wow i did mm -hmm. not know that about you yeah, yeah for four That's years crazy. Yeah, yeah, how was that, that? It was great, man. I definitely wouldn't undo it. I mean, I think it was a great opportunity. Definitely taught taught me the importance, like that you can discipline yourself, that you can be disciplined. Because I was I was a very like undisciplined kid for sure, and I don't mean that I didn't get disciplined because I did a lot, but uh, I was undisciplined in the fact that I was just all over the place, just doing whatever the mm. hell I wanted to do. And I I sometimes that's fun, but yeah, you you didn't have any direction and it can lead to like this feeling of like sort of aimlessness in life ah, yeah. and like this dead end cul-de-sacs or you just keep doing the same thing over and over and, mm -hmm. you, and you don't go anywhere there's no like trajectory so feel like they knocked it out of you yeah 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 definitely i mean i still have moments where i'll just tune out and go into that mode because sometimes that mode is tell me about that mode what that, is that mode that mode it's low stress you just sort of become insular and it's the mode that we go into... Insular. Yeah, you become insulated from the outside world, meaning like everything... Oh, I like that you word. Just, you don't pay attention to anything else going on around you, and you just... It's when you get a new video game, and you just binge that thing for like 12 mm. hours without even trying. Without even trying. You forget to eat. You forget to sleep. Oh, that happens all the time. You know, you don't... That's like an ADHD thing, I think. It might be, yeah. It might be. Do you feel like that was a military thing? The military is the reason why you started to learn to do that, or...? Learn to, about, to do the opposite, meaning like to turn. Oh, that oh off. you're saying that you turn off the insular side of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would feel like awareness is the opposite of being insular. Insular would be like maybe. And you feel like the Marines kind of brought that awareness out. Yeah, because in the Marine Corps specifically, but in all the armed forces, you're 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 focused and you're forced to look at the person next to you and be like, "Do I have their back?" And the group mentality was taught mm. to me for the first time. Um, in some cultures, like maybe even in your culture growing up, that was already something that you had to understand, right? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't have that because I was just like individual me, 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 me all the time. You know, what I want matters. Why do you think that was the, why do you think that was the case? I mean, I, I think that's a natural thing when you grow up in an environment. I, I mean, especially. Oh, you're talking about like as an adult, you learn to become selfless. Yes, you learn. Got you got learn got to it. respect the group, respect authority. Oh, yeah, that's a maturity your, thing. Your okay. elders, like yeah, all, yeah, that, yeah. all okay. that kind of stuff. You meant it in that. Sense but in some it. cultures, that's already instilled at a very young age. Like yeah, that Japanese is the culture, way we do it, sure, and yeah. in Japanese culture is very respectful. But I still know. have to learn it. I feel the same mm -hmm. way. Like I did the two-year Mormon mission thing in Japan. Yeah. 
And I feel like that was a two year. I don't regret doing it. Mm -hmm. Even if I left the church, I probably wouldn't regret doing it. Yeah. It, it was like a moment where for, for for two years, I was forced to work 80 hours a week for something that Sheesh. did not exist. You know, like yeah. that we have no idea if it exists or not. And there's something that at the age of like 18 to 20, when everybody else is thinking about themselves and solely themselves, where like it forced me to be selfless. Yeah. For something that, again, we don't have no idea if it exists. There's something that flipped in me that, like, I would never, I never will regret that decision. Yeah, no, definitely. Even I, though it sucked a lot of the time. Yeah. And it was weird. It was very, like, culty. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, <laughs> like, it's service, right? But it was service. true service. I remember service. teaching people English, mm -hmm. helping people move, like, being there for people, like, getting over addictions. We did a lot of addiction counseling as well. Yeah. It was like I think that's extremely important. It was to do. so great, especially like what you said, like at 18, 19, 20. Like those formative years, man. Like you can go either one way, go completely off the rails, or if or you just feel completely stuck. Mm. Some people that I went to high school with, they're still there. You know, doing like everyone knows people like that. You know, yeah. people you went to high school with that are still in the same town doing the same stuff that they always did and they never did anything else. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily bad, but sometimes you have this feeling that you are meant for something more than that. Oh, yeah. You know, you have that feeling. You know, it's crazy. I almost joined the Air Force because I want to be a pilot before I did a music. I couldn't because my eyes are so bad. My eyes are bad too. But bad uh, I was just immediately just going in to uh, get surgery or whatever. I don't <laughs> yeah, know what yeah, I yeah, was yeah. thinking. Surgery won't even cure me, man. Like my eyes are oh, so you're just bad. Messed yeah, yeah. Up, yeah, yeah. It's dude. over. I have Damn. to get the new. There's a new surgery though. Did you see? There's a new one. There's not. There's LASIK and PRK. I don't keep up with optic surgeries like that, dude. <laughs> I got it. I got it on speed. I got it on speed dial. I'm ready to be cured, man. Like sign me up. But no, there's a new one uh, where they actually go in and insert a, a contact. Oh, I've seen that. That seen, okay, like replaces that. the okay, lens of your eye. Up with the optic surgery. And it's actually reversible, so it's in a way safer than LASIK because you're not removing a part of your eye. You're not like uh, scraping the cornea with a laser. You're actually just you know affixing a permanent contact. Like some people get a permanent makeup kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. things like that. So you thinking about doing it? The contact, maybe. Are yeah. you wearing contacts right now? Yeah, I am. Do you yeah. like glasses or contacts? I like both. I like both. I like having the option because it's like, as a guy, there's very few things we can do to change up our appearance. And I think the face is the pretty much the area. Facial hair, no facial hair. Hair up, hair down, hair long, hair short, and glasses, glasses off, sunglasses, the style, all that yeah. is really all we can do as yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, we can't. You know, I'm, as heterosexual men, we can't really start putting makeup on, painting our nails. In general, like, it's sort of... I mean, we could. We could. There's we nothing could. wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Not... That's like a Korean thing, I feel like. Korean men. Hetero men. Yeah? They put yeah. makeup on? In like general, like, Korean... I feel like Koreans are pretty into, like... Uh, then I shouldn't be so appearance. general. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't be so general. I should say. No, 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 no. I, just, I, just, I should say. Dude, this in is, current get, American culture. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, and like, do you ever because of this? I wonder yeah, if this yeah, is yeah. like an American part of me. And this is something a question that I wanted to ask you about the military. Yeah, for sure. There's like whenever I read David Goggins or listen to like a David Goggins story, I'm like, damn. Like, there's something in me as a man, and I would say that I'm like pretty natural leader, alpha esque. You know, I'm not a dick, but I'm dang close to one. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> an just inch because short I'm like of a honest. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, like, um, when I listen to like stories like that, where like he's just getting brutally beat up in like SEALs training, I'm like, a part of me is like, I want to do it. Yeah. Like, I want to prove myself. Like, that physically. definitely appealed to me. Like, that's why I joined the Marines as opposed to the Air Force, right? Like, Air Force doing. is like has this connotation not that they are has this like pussy connotation compared yeah. to marine corps manly man like yeah. you know gassed up like there's something yeah. about like i wonder if this is something that's innately built in men either like culturally or like genetically where mm -hmm. we're wired to like like i have dreams and this is something that my wife just does not understand or like any women i've talked to understand i've never been in a fight mm -hmm. Like I've never, I've been out of trouble, never gotten into a fight, and there's a part of you want to get into one now. There's a like I literally have no, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like physical fight, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a part of me, like I have dreams sometimes. Fighting dreams. Like once or twice a year, like where I'm just wailing on someone, and I wake up feeling so refreshed. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? A real and, person, like from your life. 
I don't know. I just That'd be hilarious. Either, like, you're like, you call me, you're like, like Josh, Josh, last I night I had to dream. I beat the living shit out of you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you're dead, man. But there's like something in me. Where it's like I wake up and the fact that it like makes me feel good is like kind of scary. It's a release, man. It's the same. I don't think it's scary. And Jordan Peterson would agree with me. <laughs> but, but anyway. I got this animal in me, dog, where it's just like oh. sometimes I just want to fight the sh- like, And it's specific. In these dreams, mm-hmm, dude, mm-hmm. it's like what happens is in my dreams, and this is the same format almost every single time, someone's picking on my wife. There you go. And then I get the ethical green light to just fucking rip someone's yeah. shit out. Destroy dude. them, yeah. If yeah, that's yeah. an idiot, one hundred percent. Rip someone's shit. Out. Rip it right out. Whatever dude. it is. And then like the green, the ethical green light is lit green, and I'm just releasing yeah. all this pen. John Legend, the ethical green light. Dude, yeah. Give me the green light. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you think that there's something real about that? Do you feel that? A hundred percent, man. I, and and also, the, the release you feel is similar to the release, you know, you feel when you're lifting heavy weights as a man. Like, mm. afterward. You know, that, that like, oh, oh I just, like, lifting, yeah. I just lifted this animal carcass all the way to my village. You yeah. know, it's like... All these, all these back-breaking activities that men used to have to do that now they don't have to do. I feel like when you start doing those things and forcing yourself to be a little uncomfortable sometimes right and learn the benefits of what that does for you because the body adapts to stress right you put the body under stress it will it will go down and then it will be back stronger so it will adapt to whatever stress we put on put ourselves on whether it's psychological mental emotional physical anything we adapt to which is Mm. wild we can talk for hours on just that but i think that's part of it you know you feel this release and in a dream, that's amazing. I, w- I want to have fighting dreams, man. Like, Dude, yeah. Uh, those, those sound badass. Those are crazy. <laughs> do you do, like, kung fu? Do you do, like, crazy... No, like, I think I was you're just, like, like... boxing? Just, it's just like, full just aggression. Just destroying their face? No yeah. martial art yeah. of any kind. Just, just just aggression and really good fist aiming. Yeah, yeah. Just, like, aiming. <laughs> good fist aim. You're in the VR. No, I mean, I, I took karate. I took, uh... I took, uh... Taekwondo? Muay Thai Muay for Thai. a while, mm-hmm. too. So I think it's, like... Yeah. And here's the thing, dude. When I took Muay Thai, it was like right down the street Way of here. The fist. Right down the street here, dude. I took Muay Thai, and like I thought, like good exercise, you know, self defense. There's like I was, I did, I was a big wrestler in yeah. high school, mostly because I never made the basketball team, and wrestling was walk on. Mm-hmm. I was a basketball guy, but I'm five seven. I'm not that good at basketball, but I play every week. <laughs> I still play every week. Anyway, um, I took Muay Thai, and uh, I remember. Dude, when it comes down to it, like, when there's no pressure of, like, I need to protect someone or, like, I'm just there for exercise, I remember there was this girl there, man, and we were in the same weight class or, like, they always, yeah. the coach kind of, like, yeah. paired us up or whatever, and I, I don't know if she was just trying to prove herself as, like, one of the only women in the class or something, but I, I stopped going because of her. She just kept beating the shit out of me, dude. She, she just, just wailed kept on her. wailing on me. Do you me. feel like you were going easy on her because no, she was a girl, but she was still just wailing on you? Well, at first I was, and then she like almost knocked me out, and did then you it was ask like her a matter to, like, of pride. Ease up? Or no? I did, okay. and then she straight up called me a bitch. Like she was like, D- "Quit being a bitch." I'm like, "We're just sparring right now," and, and I'm like, "God damn, yeah. this, this was a Muay Thai class." So this was like elbows, yeah. dog. Yeah, 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 no, no, honestly, honestly, <laughs> in in the Marine Corps. Back to that real quick. We do uh, what's called McMap, which is Marine Corps martial McMath? arts. McMap. I did that as an Asian kid too. McMap. <laughs> is when you go to McDonald's and do your math homework. No, 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 no. McMap, Marine Corps martial arts. Uh, anyway. Marine yeah. Corps martial arts. Yeah, something. I also got I also got my ass whipped during McMap. You know, during McMap. Marine Corps. Mar- <laughs> MAP, bro. MAP. Map. Mick Mick map. Okay. So but what uh, anyway, it, it combines a bunch of different uh, skill sets from different martial arts. So Mu- Muay Thai is one. It has some Muay Thai elements. It has some Krav Maga elements. It has different. It's a it's a uh, hybrid martial arts, so to speak. But there's still a belt system and everything. Oh, so for it's real? actually an actual. I assume the art. point is like to learn how to kill someone yes. or disarm. Yeah, someone. disarm. Yeah, because it's like military. Immense. Yes, of course. But there's there's levels like of literal disarm. Force. Literal disarm. disarm. Like literally ripping an arm. <laughs> well, if you're strong enough, I mean, yeah, you can. You're crazy. I guess. But uh, but yeah, no. Th- what I was bringing that up for was when we would train for it, we would we would stand, uh, you know, and do these training with our with our arms and swing our elbows almost as hard as we can against each other. Swing our forearms rather, and they they would hit each other, and we would get, you know, bruised here. But it was to like build up that idea of you're gonna get hit, like learning how to take an impact 
and not be like, Ugh, you know, yeah, like dude, that's I, I a need huge that. skill. That's a I huge need skill. that. I've all, uh, you know, if you need me to hit you, let me. I know. think I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll hit you right on this. Because like, I guess she wasn't hitting that hard, or just my expectations <laughs> were. But I remember like, that's funny, dude. She beat the shit out yeah. of me. I like stopped going because of her. I'm just realizing this right now. There was some genuine trauma. <laughs> I'm thinking there was some genuine. You need some healing there, man. I, I don't you know. I, I remember the moment, dude. She turned around. I said, I literally asked her, it's like, hey, this is just a spar. Like, you don't have to hit me so hard. And she straight up called me a bitch. <laughs> and like, in that moment, I felt like one. She, you know, like, she was from Cobra Kai, bro. <laughs> you know, <I> don't, <laughs> she was this like tiny link. Like, we say noppo in Japanese. Uh, how do you say it in English? Like, it's the opposite of chibi, like someone that's tall and thin. Lanky. Lanky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like this lanky, like, Korean girl or Taiwanese girl, dude. And she just, like, kept with. And this is Muay Thai. So there's, like, elbows and straight yeah. kicks. Yeah, and, like, I was holding pads. And I'm, like, <laughs> remember thinking, like, I'm holding pads and this shit hurts. Yep. She was strong and, like, man, mm -hmm. dude, I mm -hmm. was. I shouldn't get into a fight. I think that's why I dream about it, is because of her. <laughs> like, yeah, we dream about things that we would never want to do in real life. <laughs> Keep getting my ass whoop, dude. Ah, yeah. man, I probably deserved it. There's some karma. Anyway, she. I taught. I learned a lot from her. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about like not holding back on women yeah. in that in such specific situations like that. <laughs> Um, never hold back. Never hold back never. on anyone. I'm just wailing on my son, dude. He's four years old. That ain't no reason. No excuse. <laughs> Get in line, son. No, that was just such a... Yeah, that was such a life-changing experience. Oh, yeah. Also, wrestling, dude. I remember... This is different. In wrestling, I wrestled a girl once because I was in the 112 weight oh, wow. class. I, like, rec I like flip back and forth between the 103 weight class and the 112 weight class. And I, like, my, I'm the same height. Right That's now. wild that you could wrestle a girl because you feel like that would. How, Dude, was, how old were you? I was 16, 15, 16. You think that'd be extremely Hormones. awkward. Okay, here's the extremely deal. Extremely awkward. Here's the deal. In that situation, let me set up the scenario for set you. It up, yeah. In this situation, there's no. If I beat her too quick, I'm a dick. First off, we don't know. We don't know if she's good. Like she might. There was an actual girl in in the league that beat every man. Like she won like states. Mm -hmm. Like she was, but she was like in the 140 weight class, and and this girl won. Like, first off, she, like, even with dudes, you know when someone's, like, more notorious in the area for being yeah. really, really good. There was no, like, no notoriety around her or anything <laughs> like that. I was supposed to feel, and I, there was girl. some notor notoriety with me. Like, I, I was, like, at that season, I think I was, like, like almost 30 and 7. Like You, I, like, like, you weren't, like, daddy D status yet, but you were dangerous D? Dangerous D. Dangerous yeah, D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a cool. great one. Danger D. And I remember, like... And she was like, this is like 15. And I remember like, this is something that you wouldn't think about now. But like at, at 15, I was genuinely worried because she was kind of cute. And I was like, so oh worse. no, like that's like, and we're rubbing up on each other. Oh yeah. I mean, Dude, we're rubbing up on each other, dude. Wrestling. So like, I'm like, we got like a 30 to 60 second time limit on this before I have real ethical complaints and real problems that I cannot control. Yep. Yep. So, uh, and if I win, if I lose, I lost to a girl, right? Yeah. So it's like, I win, I'm a dick. If I lose, I lost to a girl. So I go in there, dude. And first round, you're kind of like gauging it. We're rubbing around enough where it's like, I didn't excite myself too much. We like, <laughs> but I kind of got her skill level. Like, I'm like, okay, I know what to do. Yeah. It was like a good round. We made it good. And the second round, it's like, I was on top and she like tried to escape by throwing her butt up. And I was like, I got 20 seconds of this, bro, before I, me wearing a singlet is just not working for me. I'm wearing tights. And you call a timeout? I'm like, I cannot call a timeout, dude. So I'm like, because of that, I'm like, I'm, so I like really try, like really try. And um, I pin her. But I remember like that moment of like when she stuck her butt up and rubbed up weird against me, dude. I was like, oh, There's shnipey. There's only so much you can do at 16. Dude, I, yeah. Like, now as an adult, I don't think that would bother Yeah, me. no, no, no. But, like, you yeah, 16, dude, something. the wind blows and boys get excited. Yeah. You get a the wind no goes reason. up your pants. You and get you're like, no reason. Nothing blows. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> and you get excited. You said, man, that was a <laughs> wild time, dude. Yeah, man. It's where you just, like... You wouldn't not you wouldn't only like wake up with one, but you would just get them randomly like throughout the day. It was so for no reason. I remember being so uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. Because like you're, there's almost like the shame of like, why am I turned on right now? Yeah. But it's like you're not really turned on. You're just physically reacting. That's something that like I like I, I keep I tell my wife like that's something that 
she'll never be able to fully understand trying to explain sexuality to that's so weird well i do, do feel, you ever like feel like women like i feel like women understand it but they get it you know once a month you know what i mean that time so it's like when a woman gets her period it's almost like when we were getting Oh, I all that uncontrolled, you know, because when, oh, when they act like, a certain way and they're I, like, oh, you know, they're, I, I'm on my it's period. It's hard to control, yeah. Yeah, they can't, yeah, they can't control things as that's easily. That's interesting. That's, that's what interesting. they say anyway. I'm not a woman, so. I'm not, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, anyway, but uh, that's so interesting. I wonder. I like I like uh, the stupid talks of, like, people discussing men versus women type thing. Yeah. And it's like sometimes it's just, like, the most stupid conversation ever. It's, like, really entertaining, but it's, like, so dumb. Yeah, it's like, well, men want all the power and women. Just, uh, uh, and I'm like, there's so many cases where that's just not true. <laughs> no, no. Anyway, uh, it's all on a spectrum, man. Like everyone, everyone has their wants. You know, everyone wants different shit. Some people want the same shit. Yeah, dude. You know? Yeah, there's there's it's crazy. Have you have you ever felt like um, in the music industry? Do you feel like? Do you feel like uh, all of your experiences in the military and up to your point, your maturation, you know, do you feel like it's a fun word? Do you feel like uh, it's helped you? You have an advantage because of the specific upbringing that you have? Yeah, definitely, man. In what I, ways? I think in in the way that I know not to make a promise that I can't deliver on, I think, for one. Where did you learn that? How did you learn one. that one? Well, in the military, if you if you say you're going to have someone's back and you don't, that's like could oh, mean life or death, real? right? It's life or death. If you if you say you're going to be somewhere and you're 5 minutes, 10 minutes late, that could mean that squad got attacked yeah. and you weren't there to do your part. Yeah, so I take true. it real seriously, not if someone wrongs me in that way because I don't expect everyone to live that way, but I expect myself to live that way. So yeah. it's like I I will I will always always underpromise and overdeliver as a motto just by default because of that because that's I, probably I so never, good for business it too. is it's extremely good yeah you know? we were talking lou and i we were talking about this earlier today <clears throat> like how many jobs i've gotten because of other engineers that were too lazy to fully commit to a project and then the artist had a bad experience so they come to me and the only difference between the previous engineer and me is not a skill difference it's a commitment thing yeah it's a business thing yeah it's a business mindset yeah it's like anyone you might be the most talented engineer in the world, but if you don't have the right like business acumen and and people skill, you're you're not gonna get anywhere. You yeah, know? You're, you're gonna have one project and you're gonna blow that end of it. Even if you mix like Manny Mariquin, you're not you're not gonna get a dude. Yeah, project. you mix like Manny Mariquin, but you can't reply to a freaking email. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Within you know forty eight hours. You yeah, know, or, you know or twenty four. You know, although it, I will it, it, I will totally yeah. ignore everyone on Saturday and Sundays. Yeah, yeah. As I, much as I can, I try to ignore try everybody to on same. Saturdays, but I take mm -hmm. Sunday off completely. No, yeah. it's like the one day a week. It like, dude, it takes courage to not look at your emails. It does, man. Like I I use courage specifically in that scenario. Be like Chick Fil A, you know, just. Turn everything off. Yeah. There's a... Uh, yeah, dude. I feel like... That's like the one commandment that like... It doesn't really feel like a commandment, dude. Or it's just like mental health day once a week. Yep. I'm not even that religious. I don't even know why I brought that up. I keep bringing up religion because I think it's like a great thing that everybody can kind of relate to. But, yeah, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm religious to other people i think i don't i don't see myself as religious meaning i don't like pray the rosary every day and like i don't have these like ritualistic yeah. things around it but you know i consider i i i appear religious because you i think believe in that mind because i believe in god and like okay. all those all these other things around that like you don't and, think and other things that, that like the difference between the mindset difference of luck versus blessing or or I definitely think luck is a thing, but I think it's also separate from blessing. Like, you can be lucky and not blessed, or you could be blessed and lucky, or you could be a combination the other way. You know, you could be... Like, blessed uh, and also fucked. And also unlucky. Like, yeah, you could like, have one day, fucked, you get the right. best opportunity in the world, and the next day you realize it's not even for you. Like, the opportunity that you dreamed of. Like, like they say, never meet your heroes. Like, you meet this, you oh, get this dream shoot. job, and it's all you ever wanted, and then you go in for your first day of work, and it's just everything you hate. Dude, can we talk about you know? that? So... I I don't know if you had this, but this is something that I had. When I moved to LA, I started hitting milestones fast. First yeah. celebrity clients, yeah, yeah. like first big mixes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started hitting these milestones way too fast to the point where like 
not one, I don't think I fully appreciated them, and two, mm. it made me it made me depressed, bro. Because it made me realize what I thought I wanted, what this, I've yeah, been looking be for for years, I finally got, or mm -hmm. was on the pathway of getting, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden I realized, oh shit, this isn't what I thought it was. Yeah. And like, it made me question everything. It's like, because what I thought I wanted, it, it was a little bit, it wasn't exactly how I envisioned it. Mm -hmm. You feel, you felt similar at all? Yeah. Oh, I, I mean, I feel the opposite because I'm having the opposite experience. Like all my milestones are extremely slow. So it's mm. like, it's interesting to hear that though. And I, I do, I do think that like I came to LA maybe even before you, I came in 2017. 2017, yeah. Right. So yeah. You so, so here's the thing. I had extremely good luck because my, or blessing, however you want to interpret it. Because the next month, I moved here in October, and in November, already by November, I had a job at one of the best studios in LA. But, caveat, the job was lowest man on the totem pole, you're the runner, you're getting everything, which is fine. Which is what I expected, so I get that. But I worked there two years, you know, reliable, you know, for the most part, no no issues, you know, and it doesn't, it, you know, go, you know, f further. There's, there's no, like growth and in the meantime i'm obviously doing my own thing you know at my place and i'm working for my own clients remotely but it's like i i didn't have i haven't had many of those moments i had one moment i got to assist on an akon record which was super cool i got to assist on uh como no with akon and becky g at that studio so like I that's was, crazy that wouldn't have happened shout I mean, out to my being, boy matt weiss who i mean being who, not from like that. a big yeah, big yeah. city like that's yeah. crazy like you're the hometown hero because of that one thing exactly exactly and so so but i feel like how it happened with you the milestone in reverse like you're saying it's like almost like delayed gratification with me whereas you got the bentley and now it's all sort of like downhill from yeah, here. Yeah, dude. I'm I'm honestly That can definitely be be tough. And I feel like it's changed my mindset in a very unhealthy way. Mm -hmm. Like I'm scared of striking it rich now. Mm. Cuz if I make money too fast, oh man, I feel like that same depression because I had nothing to do with money. That was just like clout. And you mean you mean cash flow because if you make money too I feel it's different with money because with money you can invest, you nah, can you maybe, can maybe. provide for for future generations there's more of a legacy Maybe. product there whereas like it's it doesn't have to be quick gratification unless you're a big spender you know what i mean money yeah. can last man like yeah, if you're, if you're smart with it money i, money I just said i just don't yeah i just need to change my mindset on that i feel like yeah man but uh yeah dude that i remember that being scary and apparently this is not an issue that's just been with me and people talk about this too i've talked about it on the podcast like people that are looking to go full-time because that's a big thing with the music music podcast is we're helping people go full-time with music yeah like changing huge. it into a career that's and huge. luckily we've had a lot of people that have been able to do that and they thank the podcast for being a big part of that um it's that's always makes me so happy but there's something that i talk about all the time where it's like if music is not full-time or if you're always in the pursuit of doing more with music, although you may never feel like you get what you want, there's a level of satisfaction and dopamine from dopamine hit from trying to get what you want. And then you get there, you pass the finish line, and then you either have to make a new finish line or or move the finish line, which are neither of them are very good options. Yeah, I mean, my, I'll, I'll just speak to my mindset real quick. My mindset, as far as dopamine, I get a dopamine release whenever an artist trusts me to mix a great song. Mm. And then I get an additional, like, that's a dopamine hit number one. They trust me. They've paid me to mix this song. They deliver the song to me, and I listen to the song. I get another dopamine release while I'm mixing the song because I'm discovering it's the a, song. It's, a dope it's song. such a great, mm. you know, when you're mixing a dope song, there's nothing better, right, man? Oh, it's yeah. just like you pushing up the faders. You're like, ah, oh, this thing sounds amazing. I, I'm so excited that no. I can't help but dance, dude. I'm yeah, literally dancing yeah. in this you chair. You physically are moving to the song. You're, oh, you're just yeah. emoting to it. Everything's going great, and then you get another dopamine hit when they love your first mix mm. you know no notes or very minor notes like very like you killed it like fire emojis in the chat going off i always joke with some of my clients i'm like i need more fire emojis in the yeah, chat you know like yeah, yeah. You know, more um but no shout out to all the clients who love their mixers and love their engineers in general because we just don't receive a lot of that love as yeah. much as it might sound silly because especially for for dk is more public facing than me but it's like we don't get recognized we don't even get credited a lot of the time mm. which is a sin it's a big sin in my opinion you of know course. that's 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 just wrong they there's a label that i do all of their master almost all their mastering for and it yeah. wasn't until like i've been mastering them for almost 
two, three years now. Yeah. And I finally like realized they're not crediting me on any of this stuff. And then I hit them up and the a and I was like, dude, I don't even think that ma crediting a mastering engineer is a thing. And then I was like, no. And I like, I very kindly was like, uh, I looked it up. It is a thing. I didn't say, no, that's not true. I said, I looked it up. That is a thing. I don't know specifically to your distribution, but uh, can you look into it for me? It just mean a lot. And all I want to do is like in the liner notes. I'm not looking for a percentage. Yeah. I'm not looking for song. Just liner notes. Mm -hmm. Just liner notes. And uh, he's like, I'll look into it. And, and luckily the A&R, because I, I built the leverage by being such a damn good mastering engineer yes. for them. Yeah, that, being, like, being uh, reliable. Yeah, yeah being mm -hmm. so reliable mm -hmm. that they came back and was like, yeah, dude, we're going to credit you from now. And they have been crediting me every single time, not just on the back end for like these distribution platforms, these streaming services, but also like on social media. They've been tagging me every single time. And like some of these artists are a big deal, man. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. And it's like. I love when an artist takes the time to do it, and sometimes all it takes is just a well-worded, you know, hey, please, you know, it's just, this is, this would mean a lot to me. Like, the way you said it there, I think was perfect, you know, tactfully explaining the need for the credit, you know, and explaining that it is a thing, and, and learning how to have those tough conversations instead of just, like, curling up in a ball, crying yourself to sleep every night because you didn't get mastering credits, you know? Dude, I, let me, remind me to talk about assertiveness training and what i learned about the importance of being assertiveness especially yes. in america in a moment here but um i was talking i was thinking about what you were saying earlier about and that's totally lost my mind so now we're going to talk about assertiveness because i totally forgot what i was going to say <laughs> uh but dude i think that that's a big issue especially in america it, i think people and this is i think human but it costs more in america than for example japan um your inability to be honest and, and what I mean by assertive oftentimes is like misconstrued as like being a dick, like yeah, being a jerk, of being mean, um, like criticizing. But I think what it really means is just really honest. Mm -hmm. um, for example, if you did something to me and instead of talking shit behind your back, I just told you that I didn't appreciate what you like. Although that would hurt in the moment, you'd probably feel a little bit more appreciated than you to find out that I was talking shit about you. Of course. Of course, right. You know, or you could reveal it on uh, live in front of everyone. Yeah. And now that I'm here and I can, you know, answer it. <laughs> I can I can write the wrong right here. Like, but I mean... Um, but no, this, I agree. There's a... Uh, I mean, part of the reason why people don't get raises, people ha stuck in jobs because they don't have the assertiveness to tell their boss, I need a raise. I'm yep. working here. They don't realize the leverage that they've built. Um, they're too afraid to ask their spouse. Like, this happens all the time. Like, well, with with marriage therapy like the wife wants the husband to help around the house more but then she's too afraid to fully ask or the husband is afraid to tell the wife like i don't like the way that you brush your teeth or something stupid i don't know what it is i don't like, like the way you roll up the toothpaste tube but it's all just yeah. like they're unable to be honest yeah and this i think in america it's really really difficult where people so um with the mixing thing uh i think it's there's something really genuine and pure when there's respect going in, respect coming out, and there's this genuine honesty going in, and like they're like, here's the notes. I love collaboration. You come back and you're like honest with them, and there's no like clout chasing. Yeah, just like real with each other. There's no like you kind of s subtly hating on them for not liking your version one if they don't like it. I've had people say that the version one of the mix I gave them, what they didn't like anything about it. That's tough to hear, you know? It's tough to work on a mix. Oh, everybody, for, anybody with experience has had that. It's tough to work on a mix though, for hours and hours and think, especially, you know, I don't know if you've noticed this correlation, uh, but sometimes when you think something is your best work, it gets the down vote from the client. Sometimes it does. Sometimes. When and you have that time, feeling, there's been a lot of times where like, this is my best work and, then, and also it was my best yes, work. <laughs> yes, yes. There's that too. But there, I, I always watch for the, the sneaking feeling of like uh, this, uh, you know, self-aggrandized, like pr feeling pride, like unnecessarily in your own work. It's like, check yourself while you're working it's like it's very easy to be like oh i'm the shit you know and then you get this cold shower when you, those notes come in you know that's why so many people say take breaks you know wait till the morning to send you know all these little tips you know there's there's something about a producer and engineer now i remember what i was going to say before yeah if we didn't care like if we were totally secure about ourselves all the time we would be the artist every engineer would be the artist because oftentimes they're more musical than a lot of these artists are. <laughs> like, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. And uh, producers are really musical as well. But there's something about being unable to handle the limelight, which takes, uh, like, 
like almost delusional levels of confidence that artists are constantly working on and some people just naturally have like it's almost good to be narcissistic as an artist hmm. it's almost good you know That's in some ways take you don't feel that way at all? No, no. I, I, I see where you're going, and I, I, I think, I think that's an interesting take. I said interesting because I don't fully agree, because I, I think artists are among the most insecure people in the industry. Because how insecure are you, if, if, if an artist doesn't receive affirmation? They can have trouble, you know what I mean? Oh, for Especially sure. Especially early on. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about an A-lister who's oh, already made it. That way. You see, you can't think of the A-lister. You got to think of the people that are down on the ground artists. You know, they don't have any of that because they haven't earned any of it. You know what I mean? They haven't. They're not Alicia Keys. They're not, you know. Do you think like, well, I mean, like with, uh, who did you, who's the big name? You said Akon. Do you think like, for example, Akon. I think Akon's more secure. I think Akon is more secure now than he's ever been. If you were to ask him, I bet he would say that. But I mean, also like imagine healthy mentally. You I know? mean, but that could change any single time. I think that takes years, though. I mean, imagine like making a hit record right now. Like, mm -hmm. imagine you're an artist and you just yeah. had a TikTok record blow up. Yeah, yeah. And if you didn't have that mental structure and foundation, imagine trying to follow up. Yeah, you that 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 in itself, the follow up would be almost more difficult than the initial one. Mm -hmm. and so like, I feel like it could turn that way. So you have to have like a level of like delusion. Like, of course, every artist is insecure, but the ones that really make it mm -hmm. are the ones that kind of figure out how to get over or like are so mentally like and they also childhood trauma. Yeah. And they also view what they do as a skill that they're mastering. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that's important because mm. whatever they're doing, whether it's singing or songwriting or, or, or just the creation of this art, they're getting better every time. And, and even if it's not well received, that doesn't reflect on them personally. Mm. And the best artists are the ones that are able to separate the two. It's like, this art wasn't well received. My mix wasn't well received, but it still is some of my best work. I think it's cutting edge. I will make the adjustments necessary, you know, in the mixing situation, obviously the artists, but it's like, there's so many artists that were unappreciated initially that are now loved, you yeah, know, for real. and if they gave up and turned around, you know, we would be missing so many good artists. I'm one of those ones where like, I, have you, do you know what outsider music is? No, uh, outsider. There's no. a whole like 10 to 15 minute docu, like not documentary, but an info video about what outsider music is on YouTube. I recommend looking it up. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's basically just a genre of music of that's horrible, like objectively terrible music, but people just keep making it. Typically comes from a level of like mental unwellness, like people with schizophrenia that's write music. Wow. There's like one of Kurt Cobain's biggest influences was this group called the Shags, which is like three girls that had crazy traumatic experiences. Dad went to a fortune teller, found out, thought that like his three girls were gonna, he's gonna have three daughters and they're gonna like start a band that's gonna tour worldwide, gonna be one of these famous ones. He actually ended up having three daughters and he forced them to play and he just, wow. they suck, they're horrible. So like, imagine like, the point of outsider music is like, it's really beautiful and artistic because there's no concept of good art. Mm -hmm. There's like, it's like one of the only genres of music that have like no influence, had, that have received, there's no obvious influence because it just sucks. You could argue it's the one true art. Really. Yeah, there could so it's be, like really interesting. I'm that guy that listens to that honest stuff. Honest art. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, oftentimes it comes from like a really real place. These people should have been given up because they, they're bad. Mm -hmm. Like imagine like people get made fun of and get trolled on for being good. Imagine actually being bad, but like you just cannot stop making music. It's like the thing that you love and these like one of the guys, he's really schizophrenic. He wrote the song, I whoop Batman's ass or like rock and roll McDonald's. Like that guy was signed by Snoop Dogg at one point wow. and like actually made a living. And all he did was not give up and made shitty music. That's great. And like, I love that. Yeah. The, 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 there's that story that's like crazy to me. Anyway, it's that level of like. Because it's not about good or bad. Like no, you it's said, not about it's good not. Or bad. It never is. It's, it's about, about is there, are there people that want to consume this or not? Yeah, dude. <laughs> and there are. You dude, know. normalize make bad, making bad music, bro. I love that. Or like making bad music confidently. Yeah. And it, it will take away, I, I'll, I'll say like, take away the stigma about making bad music. It's so much like, take away the stigma about therapy, take away the stigma about this, take away the stigma about making, gotta get it out. making something that's bad. You know, don't be afraid of writing a bad song because, you know, chances are you write a hundred songs, there's gonna be a few that you like on there, you know? Dude, I have some total dog shit songs. Yeah. I have some songs that are Same, just man. like, dog shit. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Dude, it is. It is. I am proud of that. I'm like, someday they're going to play it when I die. And I'm going to be like, hell yeah. Like, from the ground, dude, as I rot, I'll be like, hell yeah. That's the memory, the legacy I'm leaving. Yes. Dude. Exactly. Yeah, Everyone's dude. so afraid of making art. Exactly. Exactly, Billy. Bill. I, I said Billy, but it's Bill. Um, Bill Nye. But for real, I, I do think that this is such an interesting concept. Also, uh, with music, man, I have such a weird taste in music. I know as like, as a professional, I work on like pop music, whatever yeah. that is. Sometimes country, sometimes more EDM stuff. But either way, people come to me because I have a very clean pop sound. Yes. They don't come to me for like lo-fi beats, you know. <laughs> and uh, sometimes I've done that a few times, yeah, but mostly fun. not to. Lo-fi is fun. Yeah, it is really fun. Because again, it goes back to that what we were just talking about. Like, yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. What is the sound of lo-fi, right? But it's it's really interesting. But on a personal level, you know, I get Liddy to clowncore, bro. Lewis Cole, Thundercat, clowncore. like just like, do you, have you heard of clowncore? I haven't heard that term. I know Thundercat. I mean, Volpeck but... is of course, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, yeah, yeah. okay. But okay. I mean, like Lewis Cole, Thundercat, like these. Have you heard Thundercat's D Dragon Ball Do Rag? One of my favorite songs of all time. No, no, no. Bro says, uh, uh. I may be covered in cat hair, but I still smell good. <laughs> Baby girl, how do I look in my do rag? And in the video, it's got this like ugly, cringy Dragon Ball do rag. Yeah. Dude, it's a, in my in, in the video. He's like really creepy. My wife loves that video because she's like she's like I stalked my okay. wife, and that's how we started dating. <laughs> And uh, we won't get into that. And she's like, DK, that's you. And like in the video, he's like stalking all these women. Yeah, uh, that's great. <laughs> no, no, see, I'm into that. I, I, I You're think into stalking women? Oh, me too, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please take that out of context <laughs> and, and clip that all over the internet. <laughs> we, we appreciate this, uh, these out of context clips. But no, no, I'm into the clown core. I just didn't know the term. Yeah, that is so... No, that's a band. It's a band. Oh, Clowncore is it's a band. It's two dudes. Okay. It's two dudes. I and thought it was a genre. No, it's it's a it's, it's two dudes. Oh. Okay. It was it was a time when like I kind of had a bad taste in my mouth from uh, college, just like mm -hmm. way too many like jazz grandstanders, people mm -hmm. that are just like jazz is the best, and it's like the peak art form for music, and just oh, yeah. like studying jazz a lot in school, and yeah, then all yeah. of a sudden like I had a bad taste in my mouth with jazz, just like the gatekeepiness of it, or like the what do you call it. Yeah, like, no, no, I've like, had the similar the experience. I was in jazz band in high yeah, school yeah, yeah. and stuff. And then so, all yeah. of a sudden, like, I'm sitting here enjoying the weirdest music I've ever listened to. It's like EDM, screaming, syncope, a crazy time, just like musically so good. And then all of a sudden, the saxophone starts playing, and I have this like surreal like moment where I'm like, oh fuck, this is jazz, and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Some of the best jazz musicians in the world are like op like are cross genre, like they're playing oh, yeah. metal stuff. They're like playing with all kinds of crazy time signatures and like they're into like a lot of the progressive genres. So like yeah. it, it, it sort of if you add the word progressive to something, it's like putting the word jazz in front of it. Dude, um <laughs> being Japanese, bro, I grew up and my mom was really into like Japanese fusion. Yeah. So a lot of like the pop stuff, which is basically Quincy Jones inspired, Earth, Wind & Fire inspired, very like horn, straight, like very intelligent musical pop. Yeah. And then also just straight up fusion. <laughs> I like like I grew up listening to a lot of like, pop. like uh, Takanaka, the guitar player, grew up uh, listening to a lot of like uh, Yellow, Magic Yellow Submarine. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know any of these people. Just like, so like the city pop is like a very popular genre right now. It's like a, it's like city a sub genre of like okay. 80s Japanese music. This is when Japan was in like an economic bubble and like uh -huh. had the money to just blow on. Like the reason why Akira is a crazy like experience as far as like an anime movie okay. is because that's like the biggest budget they've ever spent on an anime ever so like in and that time everything is hand drawn so not oh, only wow. is the movie like usually it's like static background f moving foreground right but in that movie there's multiple shots where the background and the foreground are moving at the same time and it's all hand drawn and that's it's amazing just, that's never been done yeah i have no i have no idea how how animations are made so no that's, you gotta you wild. gotta watch like go to Hulu or wherever it's at, like, you can watch the HD version of Akira. The The story is ass. What they do is they take the first half of the first book and the second half of the sixth book, and they just kind of try to make it cohesive. So yeah. they, but, like, they try to do it like some, this is art, and so it's like, but really, it just doesn't make sense. It's They try to pull it off, like, artistic, but yeah. it just doesn't make sense. Like, believe but, us. But, the, uh, <laughs> but Akira is, like, artistically speaking, just such a beautiful movie. Yeah, to look at. Oh, yeah. 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 
Dude, yeah, Japanese fusion is just simply, it's just built different. That's what I grew up on. And then my dad was like an Eminem head. Oh, funny. Yeah, he's a white dude that so like funny. listened to love music, love songs in the shower and like listened to Eminem. But he was like a closeted Eminem lover because he yeah. was like really Christian and like. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, like didn't want to like be known as the guy that like swear music that swears. But like Eminem isn't really the best really Christian artist. <laughs> he really loved Eminem, dude. Yeah. He really loved. It was like a little bit weird. I remember one time my dad sat me down in a car. It's like the, one of the only times that he like was a good parent, like a good dad, and like, like uh, he's like taught me a lesson that I remember to this day. And he pulled out Eight Mile, and like the last rap battle on Eight Mile pulled it up on YouTube when I was in high school, dude. Mm -hmm. And he played it. And he's like, look at this. Sometimes you just gotta make fun of yourself, and and then move on. And I remember, like, that made such a big impact to me because my dad, first off, he just showed me, like, the most explicit scene that's just so off for my dad. But it, but it felt really honest, what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. It felt really honest because it wasn't something that he typically d did. It's like if you, the first time you hear your parents swear or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, uh, wow, that really went off topic. But anyway, <laughs> anime is dope. Jazz fusion is, is dope. Is, is. Why are we talking about jazz? <clears throat> it's dope. Jazz is weird. Jazz is dope. We got there, man. We I don't got know. There. We followed the yellow brick road. Tell me something embarrassing. What did you do that was embarrassing that's hilarious now? Ooh. Is there anything like that? And tell me a funny story. A I don't real know, life man. thing that happened. I, like, try to make me laugh. I feel... I try to make you laugh. I make you laugh all the time, bro. <laughs> you, you, you successfully <laughs> I, make me laugh I make you, all I make you laugh all the time. Um... It's it's like the uh, the people that are like child heckling the comedian. They just like come in and like I'm not gonna laugh at anything you say. I'm just I'm here, like this the whole time. I'm here to have a bad time. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> no man. Um, I'm, about embarrassing stuff. Okay, I can think about one thing in particular. Um, <clears throat> I grew up like uber Christian, uh, very sheltered, very bubbled. I will say. Um, didn't like I said. Didn't know really anything about sex until I was in, in general my, Protestant, in my teens. Protestant, Catholic, general Protestant. Okay, uh, but it was like fundamentalist, like that. No, oh. yeah, very, very strict. Like people are dancing like, with like the spirit. Women couldn't wear pants. You know. Oh, you were Amish, but no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'm almost, just... almost. We had electricity. Really? No, but, but it was, it, it was, was a very, much. it was, it was very insulated. You know, insular. Back to that term. It was it was just very like that is so interesting. Yeah, so about, about, that's why it's tough for me to think about embarrassing shit because I was so careful not to do anything that would be embarrassing. I mean, I embarrassed my parents likely all the time. Are they still actively going? Not them? to those kind of churches. No, no, no. They're they've loosened up now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> they're, okay. they're 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 way more easygoing. Um, but. That's yeah, crazy. You're yeah. like in the pop music world right now, bro. Yeah, you're yeah. in LA. Like this is Satan's Satan's, Satan's smoking room, den. dog. Yeah, 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 dude. Yeah, no. Uh, that's a whole other story. How how that happened. But like, I like I had... little demons are on the streets in LA, <laughs> and they're just poking. I just each other, I just bro. cast them out as I go, man. Dude. You know, you just little by little, you just yeah, just, dude. It's just the scram. city of city of Waffle House and porn stars, dude. I don't. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know. Like the, like, I'm trying to think of LA. LA is just, LA is just, yeah, it's just Satan's doghouse. I, I feel it's that, but it's also it's also like everything. Yeah, I keep my ho holy oil on me. Um, it's it's like it's that, but it's also all these great things, you know. And oh, and I no, really I, I was being sarcastic. I was being sarcastic. No, no, I, no, I know, I know you're making jokes. I know, but it's all LA is everything. LA is everything unfiltered. It's truth. Well, it's, it's, it's like what you were talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just raw honesty. That's LA. Any you big city, so? any big city. I'm not saying everyone is honest. D define That's a different thing. <laughs> I'm saying the city, not the people in it. The city is honest. Tell, meaning me, it, tell me what you mean by that. Break it down. I, okay, I'm breaking it down. Honesty meaning it shows uh, the reality of a bunch of different cultures. Mm. It it It's not... I've, dude, I've never had a real taco till I moved out here. It's Yeah, right? Anything, any real like Mexican food is r until you move it's, here, right? And, oh, well, that's what you mean. Like it's real Mexican. Food. It's real. I, I mean, it's authentic, and people are people come to LA to be themselves, authentically themselves. I don't mean they don't have you egos. Make it. I don't mean that they're good people, all of them. I mean oh, that that it is a real place. It is a gritty, earthy place. You know, where 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 bad things happen, where good things happen, where careers are made, where careers are lost. It's like. It's it's a jungle, you know. Oh hell yeah! And I think that the jungle 
you know, if you if you just speak uh, geographically, is like the least inhabitable place for humans. But that's where all the animals are, right? The animal kingdom is so vast, right? So when you say a city is like a jungle, it's like you have a vast amount of variety in livelihoods, in you know, career choices and people, you're going to meet people in Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, that you would never meet anywhere else in the world, man. So that's, that's why I love LA. Like, that's why I want to stay here. You know, that's, that's what attracts me to it. Dude, sometimes I need to be, I need to be reminded how, how LA is. I feel like recently I've been trying to be active about it, but like LA really is a great place. Yeah. Sometimes you forget about it. Yeah. I feel like I kind of got lost in the sauce a little bit. I try to get out. I try to see and, and, and like, meet people that are outside of my music circle just because it's like oh, if, yeah. if i don't do that Dude, locals yeah la natives yeah fucking the best they're cool they're so cool yeah, yeah there's jokes about it it's like it's like the only like good people in la are the people that move here i'm sure you've heard those right are the only bad people in la are the people that move here no no the only the only people that are making it <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> because it's like everyone comes to la but anyway i don't believe that <laughs> I feel clear. like every good experience I've had with it's like a native LA. Yeah. La- Los Angelian. Los Angelino. Los Angelino. Yeah. Angelinos. Angelinite. Yeah, Ang- Angelinite. Angelinite. Angelinite sounds like a-, a rock, you know. This is an Angelinite sample. Let me show you. <laughs> it's a great specimen if you look carefully. Dude, do you feel there, like you're you super laugh, conservative? <laughs> do you feel like your super conservative background? affected you i mean it's so interesting course, that like course, that like i mean obviously me. but, like uh, maybe i should ask specifically how because it's so interesting to me that like i feel like i grew up really sheltered being like growing up mormon well i'll tell you this and then you like but i like could wear whatever the fuck i, I didn't want. hear eminem until i was an adult that's how sheltered i was mm, and then not because of any sort of like racial stigma, but no. because like of Christianity, because no, like I didn't listen no. to rock music. <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> Never mind. We'll I didn't even know. I didn't even know a, a single rapper's name. Not even the most famous. I didn't even know who Jay Z was. I didn't know who Nas was until I was an adult. Like that's weird. That's you know? so weird. Yeah. Okay, okay. Can I ask you objectively, objectively? Objectively, is it good? Is Eminem great? Objectively, of course. Yeah, great. Really? Yes. See, I, I felt the opposite. Like the Extremely first time I heard talented. "Wonderwall" by Oasis, which was, by the way, like two years ago. The first time I ever heard that song. Oh wow, that's again. Cool. Like I'd never listened. You're to sheltered rock. in that way. I've never. Go. My dad doesn't listen to rock. My mom is just yeah, to rock. Yeah. I listen to ACDC only because of Guitar Hero. Yeah. Like I know who ACDC is and Aerosmith because of Disney World. Mm-hmm. Like so. And like, the songs we hear in movies and stuff. You know. You, yeah, you but you don't recognize those. it. But I yeah. listened to a "Wonderwall" for the first time in my life intentionally two years ago, and I remember thinking, "Holy cow, this song is mediocre at best." Yeah. Have it's, you ever felt that about any famous hip hop song? Of course. Any 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 song in general, but that's easy to do after it's a hit, right? Yeah. It's, it's easy so, to hate on something that's been successful. It's not like a hate thing. I just and like, I, I wow. don't mean you're hating. I mean I mean like it's not for you. Yeah. But you're like, not the cow. you're not the uh hot AC charts. You know Dude, what I mean? You're not the demographic. It's very hopeful, man. I heard that and like I was inspired because I'm like, wow, like like, like, for example, like, as it was, it doesn't matter as it was by Harry Styles. No matter what you think about pop music, that's a catchy song. No matter what you yeah. think about Harry Styles, that is a well-written song, dude. Yeah. Like, I can I mean, sing that. I, I, but again, back to our, there's nothing good, nothing bad. I don't know what a well-written song is. I mean, it keeps my attention. It's got some cool moments. Oh, dude! For right? me, a well written, a, a good song is something that's so catchy that I can sing it. I can remember the. Okay, hook. so for you, the stickiness yeah, is the factor. Yeah, I can remember okay. the hook while at a different concert. Like they can be blasting somebody else, and then music, you can sing it and against I can it. Still sing it against. You could have a song battle. That's <laughs> how good the hook is, because you know what it is. You're trying to remember a hook, but there's another song oh, yeah, blanks, you can't it's remember. Tough. Yeah, yeah, especially with melodies and everything, all, all, all messing with you. Like initial Jacob Collier, I can't remember any of his songs. Mm -hmm. that's fair but i would say you're rating not the goodness or badness of the song you're rating the stickiness of the song because i can show you i can show you an amazing mind-blowing song that you won't remember oh yeah for sure i can show you tons of those where where you'll where you'll sit and you'll just be like in awe of how good the song is and then you're not going to remember it in t-minus you know 
five seconds, oh, five for minutes. Sure, for sure. Like, but the feeling you had when you listened to it, that's what lingers. The There's... thoughts that go on in your head when you listen to a very vulnerable singer sing certain lyrics and like the way they can just almost sound like they're crying but singing at the same time. Mm. Like all those moments that singers, I'm a singer myself, so I can do that. No, There's moments rarely. I know for real though. My it's wife like when and I, you have that, you know, that's amazing. Do you do you like art, like painting on walls? Again, you know like sometimes? again, super sheltered. So I didn't grow up with, with going to museums. We didn't go to museums. Have you gone to now? Like some of these are free. Dude, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. LACMA is free after three p.m. for Los uh, Angeles nights. <laughs> no, I mean I just don't go by myself. So I'd go with somebody, you know? Yeah, dude. It's cool. We just went this uh, last week. And it, my wife and I, we love to talk about art. I feel like I love talking about art. First off, art history was one of the few classes that I took that I was like personally really so like it was great. I think partially because it was a, it's a art form that's very synonymous to music, but totally different. So I'm able to look at it objectively, right? Where like music, it's like I'm way too engaged. And like my biases are way too strong that I can't look at it objectively. And mm -hmm. we were talking about this, like my wife and I uh, talking about liking music and what makes um, music really great. My wife and I were talking about what makes art good. So we went to LACMA and saw like all this modern art. Yeah. Bro, I don't know about you, but I get down for some squiggles, man. Some like bomb ass squiggles on like canvas. Yeah. Some some straight lines and some splashes, dude. Yeah. Some cubes and a weird messed up face that you don't know what's going on. I get, but then you see like Mon, Mon, like the 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 Mona Lisa dog just like does not get me excited. Yeah, no, no, that's... Renaissance art. Like, don't get me wrong. I think like like Michelangelo, technically one of the most beautiful artists of, of super all prolific time. ahead of his time. You know, right? So, yeah. so technically Rembrandt, so technically so great. His depictions of what he chooses yeah. to art, so great. But I mean, for me, what makes art good is if I'm willing to hang it on my wall. Yeah, of course. And man. dude, I will, I will, I will eat. But that's I will completely... eat a possum before I'm paying a Mona Lisa. And oh, I don't care. Hundred percent, man. Me too. But that's completely subjective, right? <laughs> nah, dude. I'm judging you if you hang a Mona Lisa on the wall. No, no, no. I mean, your decision of what to hang Bro, on the wall. Bro, you like plain looking, like, like, <laughs> like plain Jane Mona on the wall. Plain dude, you like the what? Like, I don't know. It's like, bro. That's like the least. If you hang that on the wall, it's like that shows nothing about your personality. I want something where it's just like squiggles, bro. What if I'm a Renaissance man? I'll be like, you're have you have you like looked at modern stuff? Cause it's great. Yeah. Again, I, I, I just go to this, you know, the the good art for me is just dependent on the feeling that it leaves me with. You know, if I look at a piece of art for a few seconds, a minute, and I don't feel anything. So I so what I'm saying is like the way that I define that, the way that it makes me feel is as for me, the way that I filter determine whether I like that piece yeah. is in my mind, would I hang this? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And my wife's just like, I don't get that because I don't I don't look at it that way. But for me, I think about it. I look at it that way too. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I you and I are the same there. I I, I think about what would I want to look at every day, you know? So would I, I want to see this again. Like I do think that like you know in music. So in that same way, I love music that's shit. Like I listen to outside of music and appreciate it for what it is, art. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's a beauty in songs that are just like, damn, like the Harry Styles record. Like it's not my favorite thing. I'd rather listen to some janky reggae song that was like, have no budget. But it's no a great budget. record though. Yeah. But it's, it's objectively a great record. Yeah, I agree. I, li I mean the whole... Technological The whole aspect, album is great. The catchiness mm -hmm. of it. The whole album was great. The whole album is fantastic. It's, it's a, one of the few albums probably in the last year came out Last year or two years ago? Can't remember. Oh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe two years ago. But in the last few years, it's one of the few albums I listened to from like front to back. Oh, for real? With like, maybe maybe I skipped one song. But it was like, it's very not skippable. Like, the, the songs are enjoyable. The writing seems good. Like, across the board. So... Oh, dude, that's a great question. And that's super rare. Last couple of years, what are some albums? Because when you really like something, you listen to the whole album, right? Mm -hmm. What are some albums that you listen to in the last couple of years, front to back? Harry's Ooh, House? Man. Yeah, yeah. Harry's House is one of them. There's very few, man. There's very There's few. There's very few. I can name three. I'd probably name a, a worship record that I really like. Really? Um, let me pull it up. Like modern honestly. worship? Or yeah. like, oh, like a Lutheran hymn? No, no, it's modern. It's modern. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Lutheran. Martin Luther's Greatest Hits. <laughs> no, that's, Dude, the that's what I get down to. No, Dude. but it, this is like super meditative vibe. Um, but just like also the technical. I know the three that I've listened to all the way through. You do? The last two years. 
Oh, I missed the the Hablo Brown record. Have you listened oh, to that? Oh, I have not. All right, that's one to add. That one just came out in twenty twenty two. Oh, I don't even know who that is. That's great. Oh man, you're gonna love them. You're gonna dig. Good, I, I yeah, think so. Yeah, yeah. The Hablo Brown record, which is self titled, it's really good. Martin Luther got ninety nine problems. We I have ninety five yeah, yeah, specifically. Yeah. Ninety five, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, we, we'll forgive you on those four. We can make up some extra ones. Um, I'm just looking here in my. Can I? Can, while you're looking, can yeah, I say my three? Say it. Lewis Cole's newest album. Okay, haven't heard it. It's super good. Okay. Uh, Silk Sonic's album. Okay. I would have said 24, but I think that's too old. For I now. have to listen. 24 Carat is too to old that. now, so I'm not going to yeah, count yeah, yeah. it. And lastly, um, dang. Thinking, thinking. I don't know why. Lewis Cole's album, Silk Sonic, and oh, Charlie Puth. Charlie Puth voice notes is, is one that I've rediscovered in the last couple of years and that I've listened to a few times front to back. Okay. And a couple Takanaka records, I'm not going to lie to you. But that's mostly because I'm running and I leave his albums on repeat. So it's not, like, intentional. Okay, I found the album, finally. Oh my gosh. It's called uh, Tell All My Friends. By Will Reagan. Will Reagan and United Pursuit. Yeah. It's a great sounding record, great feeling record. Cool. It's, like, just ten songs. And it's just sort of really well made really well written it's kind of the only worship record i kind of oh, like for real yeah i'm not a big like i worship love guy. i love a good worship record sometimes yeah i don't like a lot of the modern stuff because again it lacks the stickiness because a lot of it just sounds the same dude it's I, the same chords same drum fills same drum sounds it's like everything just is like same crowd sound <laughs> like dude, as like a same. like mormon churches bro where yeah. i grew up like they're like we're really boring the like different type yeah, yeah. like Mo motap mm -hmm. you know mormon tabernacle oh, yeah. oh, yeah. is like what we listen to and sing in church bro oh yeah and then so my mom now, loves the mormon tabernacle oh, oh crazy she must fan. she must meditate or she's zen dude she's zen dude <laughs> that, i mean it's great for that sort of shit but uh it's america's choir dog mm -hmm. but uh uh dude you know it what is. i get down for that i've like kind of discovered since like my late my early 20s dude yeah like black Protestant gospel music specifically. We're not talking like rock music, like Christian rock, yeah. dude. We're talking about Corey Henry mm -hmm. on the organ, fucking. He's making that just organ ripping. breathe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The articulation, the drummer that just does not know how to calm down, dude. That way too many yeah. fills. Just this keys player that cannot play the same the same chord twice yep, you know yep, like, yep. like he, he knows every single way to not play that chord bloop, 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 the two bloop, for bloop. one dogs mm -hmm, oh mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. gosh no and i love like, that i love that too love and that like too. even in like one of the my soulfulness favorite... just letting oh. letting people flow in like either a live setting but even just on a record setting is amazing like one of my favorite drummers is nate smith do you know nate smith oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. amazing amazing oh, drummer course. i mean he's such a beast I love I, from another, Vol Volpe. He plays. Yeah, he plays. He yeah. he plays. Uh, he's not their main guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guy, but, but he's fearless but yeah, flyers. Does, yeah, does fearless about. flyers and does a lot of their stuff. But uh, his his album Pocket Change is another one I listen oh. to so many times. That will change if you have not heard uh, Pocket Change by Nate Smith. And you're a drummer, like I don't know. What you, I, and it, even if you're not a drummer, it will Dude. change your your view on rhythm. It will it will just warp your mind in the best way possible. It's so fun. Dude, there's something about. I think it's like the pressure of showing that you feel the spirit by like improving on stage at a church. You know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I'm feeling the spirit right now. So like the drummer's like going crazy and yeah. like trying to keep it in pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's like a healthy virtue signaling, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but like, I don't know, some sort of like religious pressure just is just, just crazy Raining musical. Down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, Corey Henry's album was one that I listened to like, like front to back. Mm -hmm. The organ player, Corey Henry, dude. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, just from a musical standpoint, it's just so beautiful, man. It makes me realize like, dog, they got a head start. Dog. These like black worship churches got a head start. Man. Oh yeah, in in just in in again back to honesty, right? Because it feels more honest. I know you, I know you're saying it's because of religious pressure. I might push back a little bit there. I think it's also they're just so talented that it's so fucking that talented. it's freaking amazing when they can just cut loose, you know, oh, yeah. from the bondage of these four chords that the, that the song. Oh, yeah. You know, you look at a worship song, you're like, it's six chords and like two different ones on the bridge, and you're just Dude. like, ah, come on. They can so, bet some of that gospel music man can like raise the dead. Yes, dog. literally. Lazarus yeah. is shaking every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time Corey Henry gets on those keys, dude. Yeah, yeah. 
it's oh yeah it's crazy. something about it's something about it man and 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 those churches have been ahead of their time and the, now it's actually like coming to the fore like you're seeing more of that uh more of those singers more of those performers like in the spotlight which is super cool because that yeah. used to be something you never see you know by the way have i do we meshing we, with uh contemporary oh, like course, christian course, music you know do my favorite i like i did i did something called men's choir at byu so i went to like the mormon college bro oh, yeah, in yeah, Provo. Yeah. so i transferred i was in hawaii for a while that's where this hat is from uh-huh. and then i love talking about like my mormon background because it's like something weird right yeah, yeah, yeah. like a lot of the religious trauma there as well but uh, sure. I, I did in college for credits i did something called men's choir what it's supposed to be is like a hundred men split into four sections tender one tender two bass one bass two mm-hmm. right and just like doing oh, choral yeah. music oh yeah like cool upbeat uh, choral music what it really was was just a bunch of virgins dude that just like is the nerdiest thing like <laughs> i don't think any of these guys have talked to girls the or most like no stereotypical men's choir ever dude these guys just need to like hold hands with a girl just once in their yeah. life maybe wear some Practice. deodorant dude yeah, yeah, yeah. like just just trim your eyebrows you know what i'm talking about like this <laughs> like a hundred of these dudes and here i am like one of the only married guys in the crowd like I've touched an ass, and I'm sure these guys have. There's, like I've never, I've never like. It's almost like you can smell it. You can dude, dude, smell I that. Can smell the Nintendo. The virginity. 64, yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 Mario Kart records, like yeah. the records that they've broken. I can smell that. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and. I've, I've never described a group of young men as virgins. Like that's probably the only time. Cause like if you if you were in this group, it's the only you, time applicable. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. That, there's no other way. Anyway, it was a really weird experience. And I remember doing like this like black historical black religious like like religious song. I forgot what they're called. Like um, where it's like we're supposed to like. Like, you a know, spiritual. Clap, a spiritual, yeah, 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 you know, yeah like, like a historically, traditional, traditional spiritual. black hairs. Because, yeah, yeah. like, that's really popular in choral music. Of course. Right? And we would do these things. And, like, it's, and then it was a man who decided to go. And yep. the man was be well. It was, like, really it's cool. It's all the syncopation. But it's just, like, yeah, a bunch of white virgins, dude, trying to sing this song. And it's, I remember being, like, like, it's so white that I'm the token brown guy yes. in the choir. They put yes. me in the front because I'm making them look good. Bro, I'm not even Hispanic, dude. <laughs> I am from, I'm brown as an accident. Like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm accidentally brown. Because I'm, I'm, I'm basically Samoan, but, like, the Asian version. Uh. Uh, and, dude, it was it was so wild. They always had me in the front. I was always That's in. Funny. I was in the poster Did child. Did you get bro. solos? Oh, I got all, all the solos. I got a lot dude. of solos too. Yeah. Again, like I think it's because. Did you ever sing uh, "Show Solosa"? Oh, not that one. Oh, you didn't do that one. Okay. Dude, Show there was a f- there was a few. Man, we did like a Harriet Tubman one, which was fire. I know. I don't There's know why we're talking about that. I just I just remember. Ain't no laughing. grave can hold me down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Gosh, I just oh, remember. Yeah. I just remember like <laughs> thinking how ironic it is standing what? here because I did it. I really didn't like. It was fun. But like I remember, like thinking that this entire thing is so weird. Again, like that was a weird experience. And Matt, like I don't know. I, there's no other experience that I've had like men's choir. It was so weird. Were you having those feelings while you were singing? Yeah. Like yeah, it was just like I was here. That's an I was, interesting skill. I was here, yeah, yeah. and you were like having this out of body. There. Like yeah, you were also like and I'm like this is third weird. personing and and being like we're weird. Like, like it's not like this was weird in retrospect. No. I'm like I was in the moment. Like wow. Yep, like, weird. I'm here for credits. This is, this is wacky. I'm here for credits. Yeah. I remember one time there was this like my because it's a Mormon school. There was like a buddy of mine who at the time was like really closeted, and like just trying to like not get kicked out of school because it's crazy out there, man. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> bro, like Mormon, came up to me Mormon one time, <laughs> and I told him that my wife was pregnant with the first kid. I remember like this really closeted friend of mine was just like, <laughs> he's like, yeah, the best part about having a pregnant white DK, I bet it's her big boobs, man. <laughs> Or, you know, like the big honkers that she's got because she's pregnant, ready to breastfeed. Sounds like your four year old, like, man. That was like the first time I thought, like, that's not like, yeah, like, it was just like, it was like nothing negative. It was just like, yeah, that wasn't the straightest thing to say. Like, you know, like, like even though it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too obvious. Yeah, you that know? was like a little bit it's like. Too on the nose. Yeah, it's as like, he's he just like, that's the best part. And I'm like, yeah, I, no, mm, I don't know. <laughs> well, well, your four-year-old would agree. <laughs> My four-year-old. <laughs> there we go. Oh, we got him laughing. Got, oh, man. Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> Daddy, 
it's for me <laughs> it's for me <laughs> oh man uh dude that was something that we had to like teach him like sometimes he kisses my wife in a way that makes me jealous yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like, dog, get calm down. This is creepy. Yeah. I said one time before he uh, fully understood, I said, hey, dude, that's my wife. And he said, no, that's my wife. <laughs> hey, don't have that argument with your son. Dude, he's crazy, man. Anyway. Uh, don't let him get away with that. Um, where can people find you, man? Yeah, just mostly um on Instagram. So, At Josh Woods W D Z. Yeah, right? Woods just spelled W D Z. Woods W D Z. Josh is spelled with the O, like yeah. normal. Josh, yeah. I I've always loved spending time with you. We have a funny story too. Um, I probably won't say it on air, but uh, last time we hung out was weird in a great way. And uh, dude, I've always enjoyed spending time with you. You're very intelligent. You're Thank very you, funny. Man. You're very smart. Um, you enjoy stand-up so you. comedy. Oh, yeah. You yeah, enjoy me. Oh, my. No, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> In every way. <laughs> uh, but, uh, dude, yeah, I really appreciate you taking the time to come out here. This, of course, is, this is fun, dude. Yeah. Just shooting the shit. Anytime, um, man. Yeah, shout out. Go find Josh Woods. Great mixer, great mastering engineer. Or do you master? Yeah, I do master. Yeah, dude, as well. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do mixing, mastering. I don't do the mix master, though. Yeah. I'm, I'm against that. Oh, really? Yeah, That's yeah, interesting yeah. to think about. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Well, we should have talked about it, but it's, it's all right. okay. It's okay. Next time. Josh is amazing. He's a great guy. And I think you can tell, by the way, that we're hanging out. So go hit him up. Uh, you know, tell Now you have an inside joke with Josh. So go go hit him up on the DMs and share an inside <laughs> joke. Make him laugh. Make it Share your funniest, if anything we said made you laugh. That'd be funny. Yeah. <laughs> if know, not, and, uh, then, you know. Josh is a good guy, so make sure you say hi. And, and if you visit L.A. and you feel so inspired to reach out to him, maybe say hi in real yeah, life, too. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, thank you so much for joining me with uh, Mixing It Up with Daddy D. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. That was good. Yeah, what man. do you think? Oh, let me do a proper... Um, a proper intro. Here, can I have you hide, actually? Yeah, yeah, I'll hide. Make you hide. Oh, no, the chat box. Let me hide the chat box here. I'm going to do a quick recording. This is for the intro. And I'll say... <clears throat> Let me pull it up here real quick. In this episode of Mixing It Up with Daddy D, I am very, very happy to announce and introduce one of my really good friends here in Los Angeles. He's a mixer. He also does mastering, but we're, but not at the same time, apparently. And this guy is just awesome. He's funny. He moved here over 10 years ago. Or sorry, not 10 years ago. He moved here in 2017 and has been in the music industry for over 10 years. Really just one of my one of my favorite people to be around. I'm really excited to have him on the show. He is known for working with a lot of independent artists. He's had some experiences working, climbing the corporate ladder, the corporate studio ladder. He's worked with names such as Ludicious Va Vanda Cornelius and other people. He's even got assistant credits for an Akon record. So, real cool guy. I'm really excited to have on the show. I'd like to officially welcome Josh Woods. How was that? Did I say anything wrong? I didn't mispronounce anything? His name is Lucidius, though. Frick, should I redo that? Let me do that. Uh, another redo here, another redo. Lucidius, my bad. In this episode of Mixing It Up with Daddy D, I am very excited to announce and introduce our guest. This man did audio school in Virginia, but is from Connecticut. This man has been in the music industry for over 10 years, moved to Los Angeles in 2017, is a mixer, but also does some mastering, but not at the same time. Uh, and has worked his way up some of the studio ladders, has runner at, has experience as a runner as well as assisting in a big studio. He even has a, a, a credit assisting for an Akon record. Has worked with awesome artists such as Luc Lucidius. Let me say that again. <laughs> he has worked with many independent artists such as Lucidius, Vanda, Vanda, Vanda? I'm gonna say, I'm, gonna, I'm fucking this up, dude. Vanda. Josh has worked with amazing artists 
uh, local artists, independent artists such as Lucidius, Vanda, Cornelius, and other independent artists. This guy's the man. We love telling jokes. He's also a lover of stand-up comedy, just like me. We always have a good time. His brother is also in the music industry. We don't talk about him in this episode, but uh, Josh is one of my favorite people to be around. Please, let's give a warm welcome to Josh Woods. Fade down. Is that good? Yeah, man. I said that right? We didn't talk about your brother at all. No. He's going to be pissed. I'm just kidding. We just, we're just going to need to have him on the podcast. Yeah, man. We're just going to need to have uh, you know 10 more episodes of us shooting shit through, through the years. All right. Well, thank you so much. We're going to sign off. Peace.